this is Grace and Aaron from When, when Rivers, Rivers Meet. Meet. And you're listening to Jim and Mike. Talk music. Shacks my brain Today I have two special guests with me. They make up the blues rock band When Rivers Meet. They release two EPs and one full-length album, We Fly Free, and are about to release their second album, Saving Grace, on November 19th. So let's all welcome the Jim and Mike Talk Music, Grace and Aaron from When Rivers Meet. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, yeah. How are you doing? doing? Good, good. So you're Thanks you're in Essex, it. yeah, you're we in are, Essex. yeah. Great. The, so this is the first interview I've done from England, or talking to someone from England. We've interviewed a couple people from Liverpool, but they lived in the United States. Oh, so. oh awesome! Oh, nice. Good to be the first. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I wanted to ask you, what kind of music were you guys listening to when you when you were growing up? Like, like what were some of your musical influences? Growing up. Well, my influence uh, from from my from my dad's side was like rock and roll. So you're talking like Elvis Presley, okay, uh, Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison, people like that. And and my mum was uh, a big Beatles fan. So that oh, was great. my uh, <laughs> that was my influences from my childhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my influences were mostly um, sort of Motown and soul, which was actually an influence for quite a long time, mm-hmm. um, and huge like dusty springfield fan um gladys mm-hmm. knight and then it was actually when i met aaron that he introduced me more into um and blues so okay yeah you guys had a pretty big year this year uh so far you've been in three magazines right two you were on the we cover have. of but probably the biggest was the uk blues award so um that was for we fly free your first album uh you won four awards Emerging Blues Artist of the Year, Blues Band of the Year, Blues Album of the Year, Most Inspirational Online Performance of the Year. So can you tell me, tell our listeners anything about the the UK Blues Awards? I was wondering, is this televised? Is this like the Grammys or is it a little different than that? <laughs> Not quite like the Grammys. Not quite the same. We wish. But um, it was normally it's an event that takes place in person. In a really nice venue in London, but of course, because of COVID, um, mm-hmm. that wasn't possible this time yeah. round. So it was it was all done online and pre-recorded. So we did know a little bit beforehand that we'd won because we had to film our acceptance speeches. Oh, okay. But um, it was a massive deal for us because yeah. um, you know you're still competing. It's still to be the best in the country in, mm-hmm. in the blues genres. So um, it was a massive deal, and we we definitely never expected a nomination never mind to win all four awards that we were nominated absolutely. for absolutely mm-hmm. did you get a phone call that you were nominated um i can't yeah. remember. I, was I, remember. To, I was just trying to think i think um, i know the um when we won we got um a message came through an email came through um kind of detailing it all and it i remember like reading the, the top award that we'd got and then scrolling down and like we've got two we've got three <laughs> who are who are you up against do you remember for blues album of the year anybody like Uh, huge uh, or yeah a lot of other really sort of prominent people on the scene in the uk um Mm -hmm. there was all the different nominations so it was pretty scary i think we tried not to focus too much on that because otherwise Mm -hmm. we'd be like just be too scary so (laughs) Did you perform a song or you just did the acceptance speech for the award? Um, no, there was actually, um, so yeah, jam, there was a it? jam with all the different artists. So I mm-hmm. um, took part in that, which was really cool. And I'm not sure if we, I think we pre-recorded um, a couple of tracks as well, oh, didn't we? might we? have done, yeah. Yeah, I think we did. Okay. 
And what, what does this look like, the award? Oh, oh. It, we haven't got it in this room, okay. but um, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's a glass. So we're terrified because they're like solid, thick glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm always terrified of breaking them, but, <laughs> but they're very beautiful. <laughs> cool. How did the name When Rivers Meet come about? Because I, I think of two rivers coming together to form something bigger. So it was it you, yeah. Grace and uh, yeah. Aaron coming together to form something that you would hope would be big? Absolutely spot on. That is yeah. exactly okay. what it is. Uh, we, were, we were in Sardinia at the time on holiday, and uh, we were trying to look for a name. And um, we, were, we were on this overlooking this gorge and these two rivers where these two rivers met. It was like, oh, when rivers meet. And mm -hmm. it was like, I think because yeah. previously we've we played music together for a really long time, but yeah. um, not necessarily always in this style. And we previously we were called Homes and Bond. Yeah. And when we got married, we were like, we can't keep this name now. And Bond and Bond just sounds like it could okay. be dodgy. I like like, <laughs> <sort of> build, <laughs> <laughs> so we knew we wanted to have something a bit more creative. And yeah. we said a lot about rivers. We were really yeah. like really into we're that idea. Into rivers, yeah. So, um, yeah, when we saw the two rivers meet. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Were there any other names, or was that the name you came up? Oh, uh, there was so many names, and probably <laughs> one of the hardest things we've ever had to do is yeah. try and change the name. Just we thought it would be a really fun process to pick out yeah. a new name, but it was actually really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've just released. Uh, actually, before I get to this, Grace, you were in a Meatloaf tribute band. I wanted to ask you about that. I was. What was the I name was, of? I think. I, what was the name? Know, of I was trying to remember the other day. Oh, okay. I think it was called From Paradise to Hell, actually, yeah, wasn't like it? That, yeah. Um, and it was like a 10, 11 piece band. It was oh. amazing. And sure, I was in the band when we first met, when I? Yeah. I think we met and um, had so much fun and got introduced mm -hmm. to the epic music of Meatloaf as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and and a lot about. A lot about four part harmony, three part harmony. That was pretty. That was pretty intense. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but uh, were you a backup yeah, singer, had... or were you were you singing? Yeah, the... I was. I was backup singer, and also um, it was a Jim Steinman tribute as well as me. Oh, okay. So I got to do all the um, Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the Heart mm -hmm. solo stuff as well, which was epic. So um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and that was a while ago. That was. Yeah, that was like <laughs> uh, quite a few. Yeah, now 15, 15 years, years ago, ago or okay. something yeah it was great so you re released two eps and uh one album we fly free uh, on november 19th your new album your second album comes out saving grace i'm very excited about this so on september 10th you released your first single testify along with a video and i love this video it can you tell me where, where it was filmed? It looks like an abandoned building or an area that's been yeah. abandoned. There's a lot of graffiti on the walls. Yeah. It's, it's, a really, it's a really cool place. It's, it's not too far from us. It's only probably half an hour down the road. Okay. Uh, and it's an old abandoned fort, um, yeah. which was originally built by Henry VIII. Oh. And it, uh, you know, throughout the years it's obviously been used when we when we fought against like the dutch and the spanish and the french and everyone and everybody basically <laughs> tried to win. Uh, yeah and uh and the last time it was used was in the second world war and there's like loads of pictures and old shells and all that sort of thing that's great mm -hmm. yeah amazing place yeah the song is just phenomenal i and i love the violin and i like the part where it's just drums aaron you're playing a, a little bit of guitar and grace when you hit that that high note. I'm really excited about this new album. Can you tell our listeners um, what they can expect as far as the feel of the album? Like, is this any different than 
the first album? Yeah, I think there's there's similar um, elements. So mm -hmm. we've got we wanted to, like our trademark things of like the violin and the slide mandolin yeah. in there. Also, with more cigar box guitar. Yeah, okay. Um, which is another stuff. Just more love. More yeah riffy. um and i think as well because we knew when we were doing the first album um we were completely in lockdown we didn't know there was mm -hmm. no gigging on the horizon but with this second album we already had the tour was booked when we were in the studio so mm -hmm. we were very much thinking what do we want to play on stage so oh, yeah. and i think that led in a lot more upbeat so we wanted to be mm -hmm. more rocky as well didn't we so yeah, yeah. What is your writing process? I, I think in the last, uh, last night, I think you might have mentioned that, I think Aaron, you write the music, and Grace, you write the lyrics. No, I write. No, it's the other way around. Oh, I write oh, the okay. lyrics and Grace. Oh, okay. The the total yeah. opposite. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of like the best way we work, isn't it? But so. do you sit you sit down together, and like, how does a song come about? I know different songs probably come about in different ways yeah like, so uh the the general procedure is we'll come up with procedure. some sort of procedure <laughs> yeah. we'll come up with an idea whatever it might be it might be a riff or a lyric or something um and we'll sort of get together and we'll we'll start thrashing something out and as soon as something starts coming together we separate yeah don't we and then i go and do the lyrics and then you do the music and then we come together and then we just sort of carry on thrashing it out and if we have where, where it's going we carry on with it or yeah. if we don't, we just scrap it. Or it mm -hmm. can be even the act's just got some inspiration for some lyrics mm -hmm. and then I have the lyrics and I hear something. As soon as often I read the lyrics, I'm like, oh, I can see what this is going to be, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. we all, we always have the same kind of vision for what it's going to be. Like it, we, we might be like, oh, I can imagine it being a little bit like this song and that song and then it can have a build. So we're always kind of on the same path with songs. It's very rare that we we differ which mm -hmm. is lucky, but we do have to do it separately. Otherwise, we do just, we argue. just argue all the yeah. time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and where do some of the ideas come from? Or did you ever have a dream that turned into a song? I think um, it's more <laughs> like getting inspiration from older music, really. Okay. Yeah. Like we'll be listening to stuff to like the original blues stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that just brings so much inspiration. And mm -hmm. I think especially when with the old blues stuff, there's so much so simplistic not not in a, in a in a positive way it's so simplistic and you've got the blues repetition mm. and it just leaves you so much freedom you can just take so much from it so, and that's one of our mottos in the studio as well is like keep simple because it's so easy to overcomplicate things totally yeah mm -hmm. now the first and second album uh did you use the same musicians like is the first album is that all grace and aaron or yeah, I mean, it's every, everything we've, we've recorded. I play all the guitars and Grace plays the mandolin and the fiddle. But everything else is done by our producer. So he plays bass and drums and oh, keys. Okay. And, okay. Um, yeah, we did us three on, on everything. Mm -hmm. we did. It's yeah. just us so three. the second album is the same producer? He's, yeah. Okay. I noticed when you, um, a lot of your live shows, it's just you, it's just Grace and Aaron. But now you've got a band. And That's the right. show that you did on the weekend, you played some huge rock festival, correct? Yeah. Was Planet that the rock first stopped. time with the band? Uh, it was the second. second. Okay. Yeah. And it was it was amazing. And like yeah, you say, really we cool. we only ever played as a duo. Um we've both played in bands, um, but mm -hmm. we've never had a band for our own music. So um, it was a really big deal to form the bands, and then, of course, we had we had a smaller gig um, for our first gig, which sold out like straight away. Mm. Um, and it was an amazing night, and 
and it we've we just realized quite how well we've kind of picked our band and yeah. or they've mm-hmm. found, oh, found them yeah, great. um yeah they, we, we had an amazing gig at the weekend it was epic what was that <laughs> what is that called it was rock something i forgive uh, me i forget yeah it was that's all right it's planet rock stock so you've heard of oh, okay. uh, planet rock station well, it was there it's like big festival yeah, yeah. So is this, that's a festival really cool. they do do every year? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think it, they've not had it for the last, I think it might have been two years they haven't had it. Oh, really? um, yeah, I think so. But well, be, um, yeah, so because of COVID, quite, really yeah, 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 everyone was really hyped to be there, so it was great yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, sold out place. Oh. Yeah. Is this an outdoor yeah. place? No, it was indoors. Okay. They, they hire out like a holiday camp so that you've got mm-hmm. all the vet and then has the accommodation so yeah. we got put in the area with all the all the different bands so like you could hear all the bands pulling up and like everyone <laughs> yeah. jumping everyone like getting it was oh, really great. fun yeah. Yeah. yeah so i mean we with like uh like bernie marsden from white snake and um also brandenburg and the brandenburg, darkness were the there darkness. there was some great bands yeah, yeah. Great bands, oh the darkness yeah that, that band's yeah, cool. they're great so your band members are uh we have roger on, as he's on bass right james yeah you have james and james so i'm assuming the one guy plays keyboards and the one guy must be the drummer correct that's, that's right. right okay now aaron you mentioned roger was in some other bigger bands is that correct yeah yeah that's right uh, he he's played for uh john verity who used to be argent and and so like shaka khan, shaka khan elkie brooks, uh, and... elkie brooks yeah. <laughs> loads of different people yeah yeah he's played uh, and he doesn't like you have to try and like extract this information from him. He won't tell us yeah, he won't where he's going. Like, <laughs> like, we tell him, everybody secretive. knows him. It's amazing. <laughs> Everybody's got some sort of connection with him when we've been out, and yeah. everyone loves him, and yeah. we love him as well. He come on, great. he come on stage, and people are going, "One Roger in this." That's great. Next year, you're doing a huge tour. I noticed. Well, at first, I noticed all the dates are in the UK, but I wanted to ask you, and I think, Aaron, you mentioned um, that you're going to be doing a show or a couple of shows in the US. I think it was Nebraska. That's right. That's correct. Yeah. Now, you're probably planning to do more shows because once you're in the US, you want to kind of do maybe a mini tour or, right? That's right. Yeah. I'm, at the moment, it's um, we're doing, we're only in, uh, in Nebraska, but we are trying to get um, elsewhere as well. A lot of it is just trying to like synchronize dates yeah. because we've got a yeah. fix, we've got our bookings down. So it's yeah. like just trying to work out how we can fit everything in. And we might also be hopping up to Canada as well sure. while okay. we're there. So yeah, there's so many opportunities everywhere, but it's just we're not used to a country being so big either. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we've got to kind of coordinate that. <laughs> Yeah, you could play fifty shows in fifty different states. Have you have yeah. you been to the US before? Yeah, we have, yeah. But... Yeah, my sister lived out um on the west coast for about ten years. Mm-hmm. So I went out there four about four times. I think you came yeah. out a couple of times. Yeah. We love the States and totally. we can't wait to play. Yeah, we're really excited. And I think as well, the first time is we're kind of seeing it as a learning. Kevin, oh, we've never toured internationally, so mm-hmm. we're going to have a lot to learn. We just want to enjoy the experience and then sort and of... And then come back the next year. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And then, then be up the next round. Yeah. Totally. But have you ever played any shows in the US before? No. 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 We no. You can, can't it's... wait. It's gonna be... You could basically rent, rent a van and just, if you get enough, you know, shows and just go from yeah. the West yeah, Coast exactly. to the East Coast. Yeah, we've had a, a lot of um, the visa application and stuff is um, it's quite tricky. So yeah, we're, we're a little going. bit, yeah, yeah. That, that's all still happening. But um, like I said, there's lots to learn, <laughs> like, all, sorting mm-hmm. all this stuff out. But it be worth it. We can't wait. There's some great theaters in uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. One is uh, oh, Sell- oh, nice. in Sellersville, Pennsylvania. Now, it only seats 300, but there's a lot like uh, Steve Forbert is playing there, Marshall Crenshaw. They um they have some like blues band they have a little bit of everything so that w- that would be a good venue oh cool. that, sounds, that cool. sounds really yeah have you played any new song new songs uh except testify like to try out on oh, the yeah. audience or you're waiting till the album comes out yeah we're waiting for the album to come out i mean our next 
shows in December, so we'll be putting some uh, new songs in there from from the new album. Um, yeah, but we we haven't actually played any out yet. No, and I think um, um, we were we haven't been able to tour. We've kind of feel like we've got a bit of a back catalogue now. Yeah. We're like, oh, we've not yeah. played any of our. Songs yeah, out. we've got so many <laughs> songs we want to play yeah. out. And it was so exciting to get the band onto the songs. You know, we're used to yeah. just going out as us two. Like the impact as mm-hmm. a band was just, oh, it's been so much fun. So good. Um, we've, yeah, we've, we've wanted it for a really long time. So we finally got there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone uh, on your wish list that you would love to tour with or open for? Um, for me, I would say uh, there's a two, two different people that stick straight in my mind. Um, the first one would be um, like Joe Bonamassa. Mm-hmm. Um, he's yeah. just such a to be to be able to play. I don't even know if he has support acts at the moment, but we love we love Joe Bonamassa, and also um, here in the UK we we love um, a classic rock band called Thunder. Um, okay. So we're always one, and they were really kind of we listened to Thunder a lot when we first got together, yeah. and it was mm-hmm. the the pub that we met used to do like pub trips to go and see the band. Like everyone went, got in a bus for a pub, right. emptied the pub, locked the door and all went to go and see Thunder. So it was a bit of like an institution. Yeah. So that would be a big deal for us as well. Absolutely. Do you do any, um, besides your own songs, you, you do any cover songs when you play live? Um, as a duo, we have done a few covers and things like, you know, like classics like Burn in Hell or In My Time of mm-hmm. Dark and things like that okay um, but yeah. generally we don't tend to do we no um i think we've just really enjoyed since we kind of changed our style and and found our sound um mm. we've really enjoyed playing our own music so we've probably been a little bit self-indulgent maybe <laughs> yeah. but um yeah, we just kind of enjoy it at the moment <laughs> i love your live streams and i i'm hoping you continue because a lot of bands you know during covid you know, you have a lot of time where you're not touring, you're not doing that much, but, and a lot of bands have stopped their live streams because, you know, because you're playing shows, but I watched the one yesterday and I love that you did, you did a couple, you did one cover song. It was civil wars, 20 yeah. years. I love that song. And I think it actually sounded better than the, the original. I have to say. Oh, oh wow. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank wow. you. And, um, and it's great because you can interact. I always say, you know, the, the live stream, of course, you can interact, you know, live with everyone that's watching, which is great. It's a little different than playing a live show. You can't, you can speak to the audience, but not, you know, individually. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's kind of, we've seen the power of live streaming and interacting with, being able to interact with people, especially when you couldn't, it was even more special. But it's just such a, um, a good opportunity. Yeah. We, we feel like we can't sit now. And plus, we really enjoy it. We really it. enjoy it, yeah. We love doing it. I mean, to start with, it was like quite painful. We were like phoning <laughs> our friends, like, make sure you go on there. There's no one on there. We can't yeah. have no one put stuff in the comments, you know. And of course, that's grown over the last like year and a half. And we we just love it. We've gone from Saturday nights now to Sunday nights because yeah. we thought people might be out a bit more now. But we definitely plan mm. to keep it as a regular every week all streaming. Great, so yeah. we're going to stay in there. Because I see on the, this Sunday, the, the 21st, you're going to be doing songs off the new album. Are you doing the entire album or are you just doing a selection of songs? So what we're going to weekend we done it with the last album as well is we actually we've got lyric videos for every song off the album and we mm-hmm. go online like play the actual album recordings so it's a listening oh, okay. part so it's a listening yeah. part oh, oh great, and then we, great yeah then we've got our producer ads is gonna also come on so that we do a q a yeah. and what was so cool was um we done a, we crowdfunded for this album because we're independent and um it made it possible for us and um, we hired a nightclub in the middle of the country. And we, we had people come literally from Ireland and Scotland, from all over. We, and, and we just packed out this nightclub and we played everyone the album. And that was part of the crowd. Had someone come over from the States as well. Yeah, we had oh, someone come wow. And like the, I think because of the live streams, like people sort of knew each other. They yeah, knew each other's names, you know. Names. Wow. And um, <laughs> yeah. 
there was such a great so cool. atmosphere. Like we remember a guy was like, I wasn't sure about coming because I had to come on my own this time. And he said, you know, and I turned up and stood outside a pub and all of your shirts and, sh- and I had a t-shirt on. They were like, ah, oh, mate, you're a rapid. Come over, you know, have a chat. <laughs> that was so awesome. Wow. Brilliant. The listeners who want to watch the live stream, of course, it's on Facebook, your Facebook page. And I, I ordered the new album on the splatter, awesome. silver splatter. Thank you. I just ordered the um, signed magazine, uh, oh, Bl- Blues awesome. Matters, and I got this last week. Oh, amazing. <laughs> oh, so cool. Wow. I love that's you guys. So cool. And uh, oh, thank you. So our listeners can go to whenriversmeet.co.uk, and you've got some yep. cool stuff in your store. Uh, like I said, you got the signed magazine, but you have a limited number of those so those are going to go fast because i noticed the one i have is not there anymore so you sold out of that yeah exactly yeah they're going quick and you've got shirts and cds coffee mugs necklaces we have our listeners can go to your website they can find you on facebook i think you're on instagram too we are there and youtube everywhere yeah, a lot of videos on YouTube. So check out When Rivers Meet. So it was great talking to you, you guys. I oh, look forward cheers, to your new album. I hope you come to the U.S. And I hope yeah. to see, see you guys live in concert and hopefully, you know, maybe meet you guys. For sure. Oh, that's great talking to you. Yeah. And so you, have thanks a, for having us. So have a great night. Thank you. Thank you for doing the interview. Yeah. Cheers for having us. Thank you so um, much. That's awesome. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the album and we'll hopefully catch up with some. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Stars are falling and doves will cry. Only sunsets when rainbows die. It breaks my heart to know it's real. Today's interview was recorded on Zoom and at, did you say, 7 Studios in Washington, New Jersey. Go to the YouTube channel for exclusive video content. Exit music by the band 99%. Today's show was produced and edited by Jim Thatcher. You can find Jim and Mike Talk Music on Apple Music, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The songs I Can't Fight This Feeling, Testify, Shoot the Breeze, and Don't Tell Me Goodbye were used with permission from Peter Noble and When Rivers Meet.